First off, let me say a special congratulations to all my South African friends on your Rugby World Championship. That's why I'm wearing my Springbok shirt today. Also, my condolences to my friends in New Zealand. However, it was very close, hard-fought match that I enjoyed watching myself. Now, on to more broadly relevant things. Over the last few days, I've been spending some time reading and studying the Psalms. It's probably the most turned to book in the Bible for various reasons, but one of the most important is the language it gives us to praise God. Psalm 1 and 150 are two bookends to a psalter of praise that covers every gamut of emotion. We have hymns, laments, and themes of thanksgiving, confidence, remembrance, and wisdom. As one author states, Psalm 1 gives us the blueprint for obediently praising God, while Psalm 150 just praises God out of sheer delight. The Psalms in between take us on a progression from glad duty to utter delight. What we need to remember is we don't just immediately go there, we have to gradually get there. And those are the songs of life sung in the middle. There's much to be learned in this life with Christ, on the way from praise, which stays closely tied to specific requirements of obedience, like Psalm 1, to praise that soars with exuberance, seemingly out of nowhere, just because we're delighting in God, like Psalm 150. I was reading one such psalm that is along the way this morning and is Psalm 51. We could say it's a third of the way on the journey of praising God because of a command to simply praising God with abandonment. Contextually, David is writing this psalm after a massive moral failure in his life, and the heart of the psalm is found in verse 10, which says, Renew a steadfast spirit within me. If we think of the psalms as a parallel to our lives, almost all of us find ourselves in a place where we fail or our strength gives out. We start strong and desire to change our lives and obey God, but life gets in the way. Maybe a third of the way through our spiritual lives, we realize that being obedient just doesn't seem to be as motivating to praise God as it first was. But this is the very place we cry out to God to renew a steadfast spirit within us. Renew simply means to resume or replace or make new again. Just as we cried out to Jesus in the beginning, we cry out to him now. We needed faith to come to Jesus in the first place. We need that same faith to bring us to Jesus now. This is the point of the race of faith where we go to God as always and maybe even more. You changed my heart before, Lord, so do it again. That's what David did here in Psalm 51. When he felt powerless and like he should just quit, he instead ran headlong into the mercy of God and prayed, renew a steadfast spirit within me. There are all kinds of things we have to renew in this life, from subscriptions to warranties, memberships, contracts, passports, and licenses. We understand the cultural context, but do we understand the spiritual necessity? I love how Charles Spurgeon puts it. Continue in all those blessed ordinances that will strengthen and nourish your dying graces, and knowing that all the power must proceed from him, cease not to cry, renew a steadfast spirit within me. I want to encourage you to keep going back again and again to the one who saved you and is currently sanctifying you and say, renew a steadfast spirit within me. Keep crying out to God. And as we do, we will grow in our unfettered praise of his name. And one day, without having to be motivated, commanded, or cajoled, we'll just burst out of nowhere like Psalm 150 with praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord.